Hello everyone and welcome back to X-Plane 11 where I'm continuing my around the world flight in the Kolimata F-A-18F. You'll notice that there isn't any sound right now and that's because I conducted this particular part of the flight, quite a long part of the flight, during live streams on Twitch and I played music that isn't necessarily YouTube safe so forgive me for the lack of in-game sound though. On the bright side I don't have to talk over the engine roar. Here we're taking off from Amsterdam. I only did a cursory bit of sightseeing here, but we're going to be continuing on to Paris, London, landing in Glasgow. Uh, part of the flight I did not record because it was across the Atlantic. That part went from Glasgow to Reykjavik to St. John's in Newfoundland. And then we'll pick it up uh, with the live stream from St. John's over Boston to New York and then to Chicago. And I think I fly over Philadelphia as well. So lots of places that we're sightseeing during this video here. Not all the legs of this circumnavigation made it onto YouTube. This was fundamentally more of a Twitch livestream thing. And that sort of explains why there, it's a little bit more hesitant than it normally is when I'm just recording on my own because it's so-so OBS using some of the resources of the system. As we are approaching Paris here, you can see the River Seine. And I take a very dramatic dive towards Paris so to recap the journey so far, we took off from Edwards Air Force Base, so we're nearing the end of the journey. By the end of this video, we're in Chicago, and basically there's one more video left if you want to think of it that way, or one more Twitch live stream to actually get it back to Edwards. And uh, we landed in Seattle, that was the first leg, and then on to Anchorage, then to Kamchatka, then to Sapporo, then to Osaka, then to Hong Kong. Then I had to make a stop in Burma. I was actually trying to get from Hong Kong to Calcutta, but I forgot my external tanks. So I had to land in Burma and uh, refuel there before moving on to Calcutta, and then to New Delhi, and then Dubai, Tel Aviv, Venice, Berlin, and then Amsterdam. And so now here we are with Paris, and I'm swooping in. Trying to get a look at, you know, the basic sites. You know, you have to get the Eiffel Tower in. You got to get the Arc de Triomphe in. And so I'm looking for them here. My knowledge of Paris geography and really uh, city geography in general needs a lot of work. I, I've got basically the world down in terms of being able to navigate from place to place. But as far as doing sightseeing tours, I could really do with looking at some maps and checking out where things are so that I can do those tours properly and point out the various landmarks. But anyway, there's the Eiffel Tower. Uh, good view of it though. I'll uh, swoop in and get a closer look though. It's looking quite nice. This is freeware scenery uh, from uh, French flight sim fans. And so, you know, you can download it and use it for yourself. But of course, uh, make sure you have a system that can run. It's pretty intense. I mean, I think a lot of the more generic buildings do share textures, but still, they, they are unique looking, and I expect that this is a reasonable depiction of Paris uh, with those buildings the way they are, you know, the more generic ones aside from the important landmarks, which really do stand out. It is very remarkable what you can get for free for x 11, especially in terms of the photo scenery and uh, scenery packages like this. Of course, there are still payware scenery packages, and certain areas haven't been covered by freeware scenery. But because there is a nice uh, scenery builder available, and of course an aircraft uh, builder built in, uh, it is easier to sort of get those into the game than it might be for Flight Sim. And so I expect that there's going to be a lot more expansion in this area. Uh, here we're taking a close look at Notre Dame and swooping in there. I, I expected Notre Dame to look a little bit darker. It looks a little bit lighter, so I was a little bit confused by that. But anyway, and I also noticed a very colorful building off to my left there. You see, in the midst of all the generic buildings, uh, we've got a very colorful building, and I wondered what that was. I don't know if it's supposed to be that way. I mean, it, it could hardly be by accident, right? Anyway, uh, here I'm climbing out. And uh, from a higher altitude, you can clearly see the Arc de Triomphe there uh, at the junction of all those roads leading in. And so we got that on our list as well as we're heading out to London. I did, despite the fact that you can get a whole bunch of stuff for free for x 11, I did decide to dip into the a recent sale, Memorial Day sale, to get some planes. Because the plane selection is very limited 
and the quality of the freeware planes varies. I mean, the Zebo 737 is just excellent, but uh, I decided to pick up the Flight Factor 757 because I really like the 757. It has a cute face, and I just, uh, especially in TWA colors, I really, uh, really like it. Anyway, here we are approaching London. This is uh, scenery imported from Flight Sim, actually. There is an import tool. It doesn't always work all that great, and uh, because of the textures and all, th there's something going on which makes the lag even worse than normal. But I managed to import it in, and it's looking great uh, despite the frame rates. I frankly, I don't think I got particularly great frame rates uh, over this rendition of London in Flight Sim anyway. Uh, there is a Tower Bridge and the Tower of London in front. You saw the Millennium Dome earlier. And uh, we will soon be coming up on Big Ben and uh, Houses of Parliament. But yep, there is the Tower of London. Looking quite remarkable. They did actually add more scenery objects to London in a recent update to uh, x 11, but I wasn't particularly satisfied. There's the London Eye. And actually we have two copies of Big Ben and the Houses of Parliament there. I think one is the default one and one is the one added by the scenery. And so I'm going to have to figure out how to add an exclusion to make sure both of them don't pop up at the same time. Here we see Hyde Park. Uh, I think there's Kensington Palace and also Buckingham Palace. Somewhere in the midst of there, I, uh, actually specifying where exactly the palaces are uh, is beyond my uh, knowledge of London geography at this point. But I'm pretty darn sure that's Hyde Park, so that at least we've got. Uh, so, yep, on we go up to Glasgow, where I need to land. So, basically, we went from Amsterdam, flew over Paris, London, and landing in Glasgow. And then the plan was from Glasgow to Reykjavik, and then Reykjavik to St. John's. Reykjavik to St. John's is the longest leg of the entire circumnavigation. Uh, I think it was 1,387 nautical miles, but uh, managed it without using any of the reserve fuel. So, uh, with the external tanks, the FA-18 can do that just fine even at uh, maximum velocity, uh, so that's fairly impressive. At some point I need to try out the in-flight refueling option with this plane, and also potentially the carrier landing possibility with it. Uh, those are both things that I can do with the FA-18 that I have not yet tried. Here we are flying over Manchester and beside Liverpool, so I'm sort of pointing out Liverpool over there. Uh, interestingly, the airport at Liverpool, John Lennon, International Airport uh, isn't actually loading in. I think it's actually too intense and so the game has sort of kept it gray at this distance uh, to avoid loading it. But yeah, here we are heading into Scotland. Still at very high altitude. I, I expect I was probably flying at 56,000 feet or something like that uh, to just make it quick. After doing all the sightseeing around Paris and London, I wanted to get along with it. And here, approaching for landing at Glasgow. Uh, nice scenery, pretty good frame rates here because it's not loading all those buildings with all those special textures. Uh, fairly smooth despite the fact that I was streaming at the same time. Uh, interestingly, the runway at Glasgow had a lot of little trees beside it. And so I'll show that to you. I don't know whether that's how the airport's supposed to be uh, or whether uh, maybe the game thought that the runway was actually a road, in which case, you know, it decided to put little bushes and trees next to the road as it would, uh, as Autogen does. Uh, so yeah, I think probably it thought that this was a road. What, what happens is when you get to Ortho 4 XP imagery, it uh, tries to decide what roads are there and puts the Autogen next to them. At some point, I really want to figure out how to manually edit scenery here. Also, to import some of the freeware packages for Flight Sim into x 11. Not, uh, not to redistribute them, that probably, uh, you know, you'd have to get the permission of the creators of the particular scenery. But just for my own personal use, uh, import in the scenery from Flight Sim, since that seems to be possible. I think that could really spruce things up in certain areas. But anyway, uh, there is a gap in my recording because I didn't record the flight across the Atlantic. So here we are at St. John's. Uh, the landing at Reykjavik was uneventful and the trip between 
Glasgow and St. John's wasn't particularly spectacular because it was just over water most of the time. And uh, here we are at St. John's taking off. Uh, I intended to land at Boston, but it turned out that the weather was pretty bad at Boston. I just decided to move on to New York, but we will do sightseeing around Boston here. And so taking off, and here we are over Newfoundland still. Newfoundland is a lot more populated than I thought it would be, <laughs> so, to be honest. I thought it'd be like barren, but uh, there, are, there are houses there. Uh, nice to see. Uh, just sort of wonder how it is over there sometimes. Here I am descending at Boston, and you can see the really serious cloud cover. This is real world weather, and I was assured by people living in New England that this is exactly how it was. Uh, basically, actually not just New England, but New York, Philadelphia, the whole area was pretty much packed with clouds and rain and all of that. Um, the Northeast in general has been getting a lot of precipitation. But, uh, yep, so I try and uh, keep it at a low level and fly around as well as I can. And Boston is looking fine. This is neither import... I, I think there's a uh, freeware scenery for KBOSS, the airport, and maybe it adds some of the buildings here. But otherwise, I haven't added anything other than that. So it's looking pretty good. I think the KBOSS scenery is made by uh, Mr. X on uh, the xplain.org site. And again, freeware stuff here. Looking excellent for that. I have to say that aside from the airport, my knowledge of landmarks in Boston is pretty much zero. I guess Fenway Park is somewhere, but uh, playing Fallout 4 amazingly has not improved my knowledge of buildings in the Boston area. <laughs> I, uh, I guess it's because in Fallout 4 they were all nuked and looking quite different. But uh, Or maybe I just haven't played enough Fallout 4, which I, I ought to do a little bit more of. But anyway, uh, yeah, definitely need to brush up on landmarks in the Boston area. It was even worse as far as clouds went in the New York area. And you'll see that in a moment. Here we are breaking below the clouds and we are at very low altitude, below 1,000 feet in order to break below the clouds here. I'm still intent on doing some sightseeing though and this just makes it more dramatic so it's fine by me. Um, challenging to handle the F-18 at this altitude and this speed but Eventually, I think I do drop the flaps to be able to go slower, and you can see 170 knots there. And we are beside Manhattan here, and things are looking good. This is a scenery imported from uh, uh, Flight Sim, so so this is... Uh, though there there are scenery packages available for Manhattan uh, on, the, on the store, but I don't think there's any freeware that would be up to snuff. Importing scenery from Flight Sim, though, is not without its problems. There are reflection problems. Uh, if the land is not level, uh, if it doesn't have the same exact mesh as the original scenery did, because I don't think it imports the, the mesh, the terrain mesh, from the original scenery, you can get floaty buildings. Uh, some buildings are completely misplaced. There's actually a building over water uh, from this importation. And there's, there's other weird stuff going on. But overall, the effect is very good. But sometimes uh, it could use with some brushing up. It doesn't exactly do it perfectly. Uh, so yeah, a little bit of caution there. The simpler the scenery is, the easier it is to deal with. This is obviously not very simple. As we are approaching... Uh, well, I'm not quite approaching the Brooklyn Bridge yet, but that's what I'm basically looking for. I, I wasn't trying to look for many other uh, landmarks because clouds. Yeah, the clouds sort of got in the way. I was more concerned with not crashing into things. And you can see uh, here I am trying to break below the clouds again. Apparently the ceiling height was like 700 feet. <laughs> uh, so there's a building. Uh, okay, there's the Brooklyn Bridge there. And we're headed on down to Battery Park. I'm not sure how accurate the building depiction is right now but it, it looks good enough for me uh, i would suppose if i if i actually knew the buildings i'd be pickier but as long as it looks like it's a thoroughly populated manhattan with lots of fancy buildings that all look different instead of like a hundred auto gen buildings that all look the same i'm more or less satisfied so i'm okay anyway uh let's see battery park there 
and then the Statue of Liberty. Statue of Liberty had a bit of a problem. Um, Statue of Liberty uh, is not as tall as it ought to be, and it actually seems to be sunken into its pedestal. I'll, I'll swoop in close, and you can see that it's sort of waist deep in the pedestal. Not quite what it ought to be, or or the pedestal is bigger than it ought to be. Not sure. Yeah, there's definite problems with that. I think, you know what, uh, taking a look at it now, after the fact, I think what happened was an autogen building was placed in the same place and subsumed the Statue of Liberty. I really need to know how to do exclusions with this thing. Uh, so just to prevent, uh, just uh, paint a little, I, I don't know if it's even possible, uh, paint a little swath of area where the autogen is not going to occur. Especially the launch pads at Cape Canaveral. We really don't need trees and buildings growing up around there. But anyway, landing at JFK. Um, obviously, I always have clearance. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I, I guess if there's one thing uh, I think we all want them to improve in X-Plane 11, it's the air traffic control system. Uh, I don't even bother to use it, but I think uh, that would certainly assuage a lot of uh, flight sim fans uh, who might want to transition from Flight Sim 10 to this. If there was a reasonable air traffic control system built in, uh, right now it's underwhelming. Though, I mean, to be fair, even at the best of times, I don't use air traffic control very much. I will with the 757 for Flight Factor. I swear I will try and do things properly. I, uh, it, uh, we will have failures. We will, I mean, uh, um, we will have all the, all the realisms with that uh, 757, then I'll try and have a little flight sim 757 career, possibly with videos for you. I don't know if you guys are really interested in that. Who knows? Uh, but it is fun to fly. I've tried it out, and so I'm looking forward to it. I also got a glider. The glider that comes by default in x 11, I forget what it's called. It isn't all that great, and I decided to get the Antares 20E. From Aerobasque. Uh, it was a 12 buck plane and it's it's fun. It's a lot of fun. It's got a little built-in propeller if you want to boost yourself up a little bit of electric propeller. Here we are taking off from JFK of course and I'm looking forward to doing some cross-country gliding though. Um, it's tough because I don't have anything to indicate the thermals. There was a thermal plug-in that the README for that glider offered, but uh, that thermal plug-in was for X-Plane 10, and it doesn't seem to be working for me in X-Plane 11 right now. Also, the variometer, the thing that goes beep uh, when you're in a glider, it's not going beep for me, so that's a bit of a problem. So we'll see how that works out, but I still like, I want to go across the country in a glider, I really do. So anyway, uh, having taken off again from uh, JFK, I decided to turn off the real world weather so that we could get a good look at Manhattan. And this is quite a view. This is quite a view. And, but there is one blue building that doesn't seem to be where it ought to be. See that guy? Um, I've concluded that it's aliens, really. Uh, I am saying it's aliens. Uh, there's a blue building here, and there will be a black building in Chicago. And actually, there are multiple blue buildings, little spires there. But probably a factor of the importation. But, you know, if I really want to get uh, the best effect, I should probably just get uh, scenery that was made for x 11. All in all, I'm thrilled that it is this good as it is. So, yeah, I'll, I'll be satisfied with this and we'll just chalk it up to some aliens or some other backstory as far as the blue building is concerned. I don't know whether that's autogen or whether something else is going on, but the rest of it looks absolutely brilliant. So, anyway, on to Philadelphia. Uh, where we were doing some very specific sightseeing during the live stream because uh, somebody hails from there. And so here we see the center downtown Philadelphia uh, following, I think that's uh, Interstate 95, on down towards the airport. And you can see the map there. Of course, the flight between New York and Chicago isn't going to tax the fuel load of the FA-18 at all, uh, no matter how I decide to fly it. So plenty of extra fuel to do the sightseeing bit, though my patience is limited. So after uh, Philadelphia, we do go high and fast for the rest of the trip. But yep, yeah, a nice view. 
this isn't any sort of special importation from Flight Sim. This is just Ortho 4 XP photo scenery free download. And um, I don't remember if I had a freeware package for additional buildings, but that would be about it. Okay, on to the Appalachians, which I didn't realize they looked like this. These sort of very straight ridges, this is still Pennsylvania. And I have never seen the Appalachian Mountains like this, Appalachian, if you hail from there, I guess. Uh, mountains like this, they're very, very straight ridges, you see. And I, I haven't seen any mountain ranges that look quite like this. Uh, here's a better view. You can see just lines and lines across the landscape, these ridges of mountains. And yeah, uh, previous versions of Flight Sim, I don't think uh, captured this very well because I didn't have photo scenery. Uh, they just look like, because they were just the uh, autogen landscape, uh, they just look like hills like everything else. But uh, this obviously makes the Appalachian Mountains look very unique. And I was very pleased by this. Yeah, first time I've ever seen that. If you guys know some other area of the world which looks quite like this, you know, with these straight line mountains, ripples if you will, basically ripples in the landscape, uh, please do tell me. I, as I understand it, the Appalachian Mountains are a really old mountain range, and that's why they look this way. Uh, highly weathered. And uh, here we are going past, and there's interesting colors on the landscape. Uh, certainly seasonal. I think those are fall textures. Possibly. And here we are coming in to Chicago. I didn't really do any further sightseeing. We uh, were high and fast over Cleveland, but that's about it. And so here, a dramatic dip towards Chicago. This was a deep dive with speed breaks out. Meg's Field right in front of us. Um, in a recent video uh, with the Lisa Akoya, I took off from there and there's the same scenery. Uh, with an odd, really tall black building there. I don't, I don't remember, yeah. I, I think that was in the Lisa Akoya video as well, but I forget. But yeah, that is an odd little alien artifact, a monolith if you will. But again, this looks brilliant. I imported it from Flight Sim 10, so it's sort of cheating, but uh, I will take it. And if I want anything better, I'll, I'll just have to pay for it probably. Uh, so that is how it is. Looking good though. And as a fiction writer, I, I might actually make some use of these mysterious, really tall buildings and come up with some sort of backstory. But we, we need some sort of storyline to help us out here with uh, linking my flights together after all. Could do a virtual airline, but uh, could be exploring in search of alien artifacts like this. You never know. Highly reflective. It just, I, as I recall in 2001 though, the monolith was not reflective. I think it was supposed to be like shiny but completely dark. Yep. So anyway, but I, I've, I've shown this area before in the Lisa Koya video, so I'm not going to belabor it too much. Just a little bit of a flyover, and then we're going to land at O'Hare. Uh, busy airport, but of course I have priority. So after this flight, my plan is to head down to Dallas, and then on to Edwards Air Force Base to complete the circumnavigation. By my calculations, the entire distance of the flight would qualify as an official circumnavigation. I beat out the exact number of nautical miles I have to cover in order to make it count. And it turns out that you don't have to cross the equator when you're flying a plane. So as long as you cover the correct distance, you're okay. And in this case, I actually did it in a harder way than normal because I was going westward and so against the wind. And my goal was actually to beat out the sun and make sure the sun never set on me. That did not work out. The F-18 is not quite fast enough for that unless it gets aerial refueling. So if I had done aerial refueling, maybe I could have uh, managed that. But it turned out that with uh, the constant need to decelerate and land and then take off again, I couldn't uh, beat out the sun like that. So uh, maybe with the Concorde. Of course, the Concorde famously can do it. Uh, so... I should try that sometime. I do like fast flights, though now I've got a glider and I'm going to try and fly cross country with it and so that's the complete opposite of a fast flight. So um, yeah, I'm, I'm a person of great opposites. I also need to learn how to fly helicopters in this, uh, which should be a 
different kind of fun altogether. So anyway, here we are at Chicago here. I, I don't know if I'm missing some buildings. I, I feel like it's a bit empty. I feel like I'm missing like all the terminals. Yeah, th there ought to be buildings somewhere around here. So I think something is wrong with O'Hare right now and I'll have to investigate that. But as I turn off the plane here, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.